everybody, it's Simon Mixed Up Crowd. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got another fun card for this year's series and this is a record card. So the idea for this has actually come from Angela who's also on the design team for Trimcraft. She made this quite a few years ago I think. She shared one of her, um, you know, on Facebook when it like you can share stuff that you've made years ago, memory things come up and she shared one of those and I asked her, oh my god that's brilliant, would you mind if I done my version and she very kindly said yes. So this is what I've done. So you have this six by six envelope but slightly, it's six in width but it's slightly higher just because of this little vellum kind of sleeve that I've made for the record. So you just pull out your record and then, I don't know how well it's picking up, but can you see all the lines? I've created those using my gel pen and then I've got this record card and then inside you can write your message and it's got a little flat piece on the back there which I do on my any circle cards I've done them on the easel cards it just means that it will keep the base straight so it kind of lands the back of it so it doesn't roll but how cute is that so for any music lovers you have in your family and um, I just thought it was so cute and I also did play around with a CD as well can you see the acetate in the middle here? Haven't decorated it, I've been playing around with that one, but it will work so much better with the holographic cardstock, but I am out of it. And I brought all the rose gold and totally forgot about the holographic, so I need to order some more. So if you wanna do the CD, I think it's gonna look brilliant. It will be exactly the same way as I do this, except in between, like here, you'll see, this is this kind of black, um, I guess, figure of eight is done separately and joined there. And then this is another separate piece of black on top. So in between the two black pieces there, you would put a piece of acetate or window sheet to make it look like that center of a CD. But otherwise, yeah, just do it exactly the same way, but get the holographic because it looks so good and you can see the holographic in these um, tiles. And these are the metallic letter tiles by Dovecraft. So I've used those and I'll be using them again today. But that in the cardstock, which I used a few like months back, I've just, yeah, it's amazing. Then for the birthday, I've used the birthday words. This is the Bright Rosa collection range and I've used the birthday there. Really like that. And I've just popped it on some foam as well. So I die cut it in the holographic and then I die cut it in some foam. And then the music notes I cut from my Cricut and then yeah it's it's pretty straightforward but I think it looks really cool and I love all these little extras so I just think what a nice little gift so it's really easy to personalize as well the paper packs I've used this is the Paper Addicts Viva Forever because it had the good vibes so I thought that looked really good on the envelope and then for this one I've just pulled out this one here the bunting for the envelope and for the middle, I've got this piece here. For the middle of that one, I use the polka dots. So yeah, let me show you how to make it. Okay, so for the envelope, you have to make your own envelope. So I've used the envelope punch board and you will want to follow the one for a six by six, which is nine and a half by nine and a half, but I do extend the score line on one side and I'll show you that at the end when we get to it but that's what I've used to make my envelope and I'll link this in the description box below. So that's my piece of nine and a half by nine and a half for my envelope. Then for the actual card itself this is just my A4 length which is 11 and three quarters so if you're using 11 then you will just have a shorter, you'll, you'll have a smaller circle. You can make this any size you want once you see what I'm doing. So you can use your 11 inch but you'll have a smaller circle. So this is the default length, 12 inches is fine, then score at six and fold it in half. With this one here you want to score at five and seven eighths of an inch along the long side and fold in half and that will give you this five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths squared piece. So this is what we're going to cut the main case or card from. Then you want a piece of, I've just done these at six by six, it's just to cut more circles from. So that's to write our message inside, which is six by six. This is another circle that we will actually have the record on. So all the detail, the decoration will be on this. And again, I've just cut it to six by six, but you'll cut that down. And then for your sleeve, this is again, the length of A4, this is my vellum. And then I've just scored at five and seven eighths again. Yeah, so then you have a piece of five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths like this. So again, it's almost like a card, side folding card, but we're gonna 
run some tape along the two sides there just so we've got a little pocket so that's really straightforward to do. Okay so I'm going to be using again my trusty X-Cut circle cutter. I will link this. There's a few other companies now that have started doing them. I know Hobbycraft have them as well but I will link where I get this one from below but I know so many of you have it now. If you don't then you want something that's going to be you know five and a half to six inches in diameter. Well no just below six inches because this is six so yeah five and three quarters is where I'm setting this one. I've just got my dial there at five and three quarters which is about 14 just over 14 and a half centimetres. Now what you want to do with this, just take the back off, is you want your folded piece, okay? So and you want to have your fold at the top, so you've got a top folding card. Your blade here, you want to make sure it comes off the top, so use your mat or something below to keep everything nice and straight. But my blade here, I'm not going to have on the top, it's going to start cutting off the mat because we want to keep it connected. So you can see I've got about one inch of this piece here connected, so I have card. If you don't do that, then yeah, you and you let me do it and then I'll tell you kind of roughly how high I do it because it's a hard one to really gauge. But if you're using, say for example, this is a plate, you want your plate to come off like that. You see it comes off the top and then start cutting or draw your pencil and then cut with scissors, okay? But you want to, you want to make sure you've got about one to one and a half inches joined, okay? So I'm just going to feel my blade and start there. And then just, I hover this first just to make sure that I can feel it cutting on the card and that it doesn't go over the edge. I think I'm going to just shift it across a little bit there. Yep, I'm happy with that. So then I'm just going to cut this. Okay, so I've got even more joined there, but it doesn't matter. But you want to have this kind of number eight. Okay, then whilst I've got it set at that size, I'm going to cut now a whole circle. So you don't need to come off the square, but again, you want to make sure that you're within, within your circle. If you want to cut your squares bigger to start with, you can do. You don't have to have them as six by six, you can have them seven by seven. So now that is gonna go over the top of that. So I have my record, a full circle, but then inside it's connected, but from the front. And you should just have, see where we've got the overhang? All right. Then with this one here, cause that's for my message, I'm gonna reduce this down to five and a half. So you just want a slightly smaller circle. And the only reason I've done it is just so it creates a frame. So I've just dropped down a size and you can see I've got that black frame. I just thought it just finished it a little bit nicer. So then again, I'm just going to sit that down. So it's just kind of planning really all of your circles, getting them all ready. Once you've done it, you just stick them together. So it's very quick. And it's exactly the same as the shaker cards that I've done. They look really good as well. I'll link those in because if you like this kind of circle style card, you'll probably like them as well. For some reason that's stuck, there we go. So now that one will go inside, but what you'll need to do is probably trim a little bit off the top where you've got that flat piece. So if you just lie it down so you have a nice frame, ignore the line there where it folds, make sure you get the circle just bang on. And then I'm just gonna grab my pencil and I'm just gonna come down just below the score line, you know, so I'm creating the same kind of frame. And then just with my trimmer, I'm going to join those two pencil marks up like so and then I can stick that in there there we go all right so you get a nice neat inside and then we'll be cutting a hole through that in a minute okay so next what you want to do is stick that down right over the top okay make sure you follow it around the bottom because you want that to hang over the edge. Now, because you have that hanging, that piece hanging over, I would add your glue onto this piece here and then stick that on top. So I'm just gonna run my Kalau glue over this. Again, this dries really stiff, so it's great for, again, adding strength to your cards. If you're using maybe, you know, a, a light card stock. This black one isn't particularly heavy. I reckon it's about 160, so, by adding this glue and by doubling up my layers anyway, it does then become, you see how much stronger this is now. That's more like a 300 GSM feel to it. So just going to stick that one down there. And then while that one's drying, I'm gonna stick this one inside. 
Okay, then I've gone and die cut this piece here, and this is roughly, you want something, it's entirely up to you to be honest, this is two and a half in diameter. Okay, so I've chosen that and that's going to go in the centre and then we're going to cut through all of this. So what I would say is if you, because you're going to cut through bit by bit, so I'm going to stick this one down first of all. So you want to make sure you get this, if I open that up and just line up this along my grid, then I know that that circles the right way up. And then I'm just going to pop this down and get it as centred as possible. And then open it all back up again. Okay, then I've got this glitter gel pen. I'm just going to create all of these glittery rings here just to, you know, just made it look a little bit more authentic. Now the easiest way to do this is just using your dies. So I've just got loads of different dies here. And you kind of just want to work your way out. Now mine are all different kind of like you know, mine are all spaced differently because when you look on a record, some songs are longer than others, you know, you'll have, they're not all the same. So I'm just going to pop this in here and what I'm going to do is draw on the inside around it and then I'll draw on the other side of it and then just kind of keep working outwards with different sized circle dies until you've kind of, you're happy and you've covered it. Again, it's completely optional, you don't have to do this and you may well be decorating yours very differently but I just thought it added something to it. So I'm just going to go and do all of that. Okay, so now you can see all of those rings and because you've got the gel pen, it's just, I don't know, the way the glitter catches, I think it looks really cool. So now what you want to do is die cut a very small circle through the middle. And I would say what you want to do first of all is go through the top, kind of go through the front first and then we'll go through the back. So I'm going to just use some of my tape here and pop that there. You may have to add a shim because obviously it's quite thick. It depends on what card you're using, but I'm just going to run that through my dye machine. Okay, and then just peel that off. And I'm using my Big Shot, so it does cut through that really well and just kind of smooth that off. But there you've got the center. And then if you grab a pencil, and just draw around the inside like so and with the same die just line that up over the top and I'm just going to pop some tape and I'm going to run that through okay and again just carefully peel that all off and there you have your record so now you just need to decorate it so I'm going to bring in all of these pieces here so I'm going to decorate it exactly the same way what I would say is open it up line up these here through a line so you know everything's straight and then you know that this is the bottom here and not like here or somewhere because you don't want it to be a bit wonky. But I'm going to do pretty much exactly the same setup because I really like the way that one looked. And I love these tiles. And they're really cheap. I, they're not very expensive at all. So again, I'll link them below because you get 150, I think it is, in the pack. So I'm going to do that. And then I've got a different colour music notes and stuff here. So but again, I like the way they are. So I'm going to copy exactly the same way, something like that. So I'm going to stick this down and then afterwards I'll show you how I did the envelope. Okay, so there's my record all finished and decorated. So next you want to make your little sleeves. That's that piece of vellum. So it was six and a quarter by five and seven eighths of an inch. And I'm just going to run some thin red tape because the red tape's really good at kind of, I, well, it doesn't completely disappear on the vellum, but it uh, certainly doesn't show up as much as others. This is very thin as well. You do want a thin tape. So obviously if you go in too far, you won't actually fit this inside. So again, once you see what I'm doing, you can easily, you know, change this up if you want to. And you don't even have to do it. It was just a little extra that I thought looked quite nice. So I'm just going to run two strips up each side. And then very carefully, just kind of tack it to the each end and then just roll it up like so. And then again, just go over and make sure... It's all stuck down. And there you have it. So it just fits in me using that tape. So you do have to 
yeah, make sure you've got a thin tape for that to fit. But like I said, you might want to make it wider and then in that, if that's the case, you'll then want to make your envelope bigger. So now onto the envelope. So the, for anybody that doesn't know what this is, this is the envelope punch board and it is something you need in your stash if you make cards because this is what will allow you to make any size envelope you want. So like I said, I'm following the six by six card size. It tells you you need one piece of nine and a half by nine and a half and your first score line needs to be at four and three quarters. You pop the card in, line this up at four and three quarters, punch and score. Okay, and under here, there's this score line that you follow. What I then like to do is rotate the whole thing and then go back in at four and three quarters, punch and score. And then I'm just gonna line up these score lines with the score guide there, which is this bit that sticks out. Punch and score. And then the opposite side again, punch and score. And then, because I have this vellum is obviously longer than it is higher, I need to make where, so just my pattern paper says bunting, so I'm going to have it like that. So that's going to be the top, this one here. If I fold that one down first, I'm just going to pop it in here and line it up with any score line track, it doesn't matter as long as it lines up. And then I'm just going to score another score line up from that. So what I've created is two score lines. So there's the initial first one, that inner one, but then I've done another one. And I'm just going to burnish that. And that's the one that I'm going to use now to fold the top of the envelope. So I've just basically just adapted it slightly. Rather than doing a six and a half by six, which would be a piece of ten by ten, by just doing that extra score line, it gives you that little bit of height to enable me to fit that in. So then you just fold in your sides and your base. Oh, my ring seems to be stretching there. And that one there. And then I'm going to use some thin double-sided tape here and I'm going to run, this is the bottom, so just run a piece along both sides, like so. Fold in your two sides and then bring up the bottom. All right, and that's it. And then I've got this piece here which was two by four and it was just so I could write the person's name rather than writing directly onto that pattern paper. I'm just going to stick that in the middle. So now you have a lovely matching envelope. Open it up to reveal this cool little pocket or sleeve and then inside you have this fun record card. And you've got lots of room to write inside. Well there you have it, two really fun cards. I absolutely love these. I just think they're so fun. They're perfect to personalise. You can have someone's name on this do anything with them and I think they're really fun so I hope you've enjoyed it if you have please give me a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel so you get to see not only the rest of the creative card series but also all my other future tutorials thanks for watching bye